Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Nonprofit Learning Lab for today's workshop. If you have any questions along the way, you can use the, the chat box on your GoToWebinar control panel. Um, if you have any tech-related questions, you can also type them there. Um, we are sending out a, um, a link to a, um, excuse me, a live captioning service if you need to use that. Uh, we are also going to be sending out the recording and materials from today's free webinar, um, or you can visit our free webinars page on the Nonprofit Learning Lab website. Um, and without further ado, I will now hand it over to you, Anne. Thank you, Monica, and welcome everyone to our webinar today, how to identify high value fundraising tasks and activities so that you can fundraise smarter and not harder. So what do you need to prioritize on your busy schedule so that you don't spend more time doing more stuff, but spend less time doing the right things? So that's the question we are asking today. And uh, I will present you with a framework that you will be able to apply straight away right after this session. And I'm excited for everyone who made it today, who made it live um, to be here with us. And we'll have the option to answer any questions along the way. Um, I think, no, at the end. So if you have a question, keep it for the end and I'll get into that. And if you, if you ever have any more questions after the webinar, don't hesitate to find me on LinkedIn reach out and ask ahead, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, for starters, I would love to hear from you. What productivity challenges are you facing? And again, I wanna mention again, productivity in my world is not about getting more things done. Productivity is about getting the right things done. So what holds you back? from doing the things that you probably know you should be doing, but are probably really, really too busy to do at the moment, right? So I would love to hear from you. And while you're posting in the chat, I'll walk you through three very common challenges that I encounter all the time. I've been in the nonprofit sector for over a decade as you know, an executive director, as a grant writer, as a, community manager, you know, in a variety of roles. Um, and in most roles I had to fundraise, right? And of course I was facing these challenges too. And now I work as a consultant and see a lot of other people and organizations um, face these challenges. So here are my top three, and I'm curious whether any of those res um, resonate with you. All right, productivity challenge number one. And that's the story of basically everyone's life in general, right? Nonprofit is just making it even more intense. So that is, you know, ah, I just need to get through this stretch and then it will get better. So we just need to wait um, for the gala to wrap up and then I'll, I'll do all these things. Or um, ah, it's busy grand writing period right now. So I just need to get through this stretch. And then once, you know, once the grand writing, busy grand writing period is over, I can finally focus on the more important things. So that's obviously a problem because it actually never gets better. There is never that time where you just have, you know, a lot of time available, right? So um, the big question is how can we still do the important things um, while we are still very busy and have too many things on our plate, right? So as they say, um, when you're done, you're dead. So we don't want to wait until then. Productivity challenge number two, it's my job to put out fires. So that's what I hear a lot. You know, we are all in the nonprofit space because we really care about our work, right? And we want to support everyone and we, we want to help you know, we, we are in it because we really care about the work that we do, the organizations that we work for, the folks that are working for the organization that we are in. So we have this natural tendency to help, right? And, um, but that can be really detrimental because if you're trying to put out all the fires, I mean, how can you get the important things done? 
after all, right? If you're spreading yourself thin between all the things that are seem urgent and important and need, people need constant help, right? Or they knock on your door, right? But how do you find the time to actually focus on the things that move the needle for your fundraising? And then finally, um, productivity challenge number three. And that's a tricky one, right? Uh, because that is really difficult to navigate. Listening to people who don't know a lot about fundraising. So, you know, you don't have to be an expert to be good at fundraising, right? But you need to have an understanding of the core principles of what drives fundraising. And I see that a lot with board members, right? Who obviously have a lot of power and they also care a lot about the organization, right? Um, but many of them come from a corporate perspective and don't really understand how fundraising actually works. And since they have a lot of power, it can be, you know, kind of tricky to navigate when someone comes up and says, you know, so this other organization, again, other organization, had a lot of success with this silent auction or with this gala format. And that might not work for your organization or doesn't work for your organization or just, you know, it's just too much. But since, you know, they are board members, of course, you want to consider it because you want to keep them engaged. And, and that, is, that is a real uh, challenge because you know what needs to be done or hopefully you have at least, you know, some rough idea what, what are the important things you need to focus on. Um, and of course, then listening to everyone who has lots of opinions and people constantly have opinions, right? That can lead you away from the things that you actually need to do to move the needle and not spread yourself thin and work harder and not smarter, right? That's our goal for today. Um, okay, so before we continue, I would love to hear, you know, a few voices um, from the chat, Monica, if you, if you can share what folks face as their productivity challenge. Um, yeah. Hi, Anne. Yep. <laughs> uh, we have a couple responses. Mm -hmm. Jen shared working in an open bullpen office lacks of boundaries from colleagues and other teams. Um, Suzanne shared small groups of volunteers doing all of the heavy lifting of fundraising. Burnout is real. Mm -hmm. um, and the only responses right now, I do just want to remind all attendees, if you want to send something in the chat, you can do so using your control panel, likely on the right-hand side of your screen. Yeah, thank you both for sharing that, right? So open spaces can be a challenge. Yeah, lots of folks walk in and you know you get distracted right um and of course again listening to folks who don't really know what's going on that can be a challenge and um oh my god now i forgot the second one but i get it we've all been there right okay so now you're probably wondering so you signed up because you wanted to know how to fundraise smarter not harder so what are we going to do today Oh, the consequence, you know, if you're not, I, I already mentioned that, right? If you're not focusing on what truly moves the needle, you will A, never get out of the hamster wheel. You will ever always, you know, be in that mode. Uh, I'll just wait until, you know, I have some more time, which then leads to actually you failing to um, raise the funds that you need to raise and ultimately leads to your mission not being fulfilled or your organization not reaching their goal, right? Of helping folks, helping people, helping animals, protecting the environment, whatever cause you're in, right? So that's the consequence. That's why it's so important to always have a North Star. This is what I need to be doing. And um, yeah, so again, what are we gonna do today? Our goal is to build help you build a fundraising compass so that you, again, as I said, always have this North Star. Okay, this is what I need to be doing. There are 500 things and, you know, there are some urgent and important things. How can I always prioritize these urgent and important things? How can I even in especially identify those urgent and important things? That is what we're going to do today and I'll present you with a framework. So, before we get started with that, I briefly wanted to introduce myself so that you know who I am. My name is Anne. Uh, I pronounce my name Anne. Uh, I do listen to all versions of my name though. 
I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I'm a former executive director turned fundraising consultant. And I help ex executive directors raise more money. That is, you know, because I have experience in that. I know what it is like, you know, there are 15 fires, they all need urgent attention, but you also need to raise funds. So that's why I focus on that. Um, and yeah, if you want to stay in touch and receive the resources attached to this webinar, um, it's a cheat sheet and also actually a recording of an AI webinar that I did recently because, and I'll get to that later, right? AI tools can help you free your schedule from some of the very tedious tasks. So um, I, I, I'll send along a, a, a webinar recording that walks you through the exact action steps of how to use AI tools um, to free your schedule from these tedious tasks, which just take a ton of time. All right, so what are we gonna do? Um, again, the goal, what does done look like, uh, right? The, the, the fundraising con, um, compass, um, how, you know, what does done look like? I'll, tell, I'll share with you the framework um, that helps you prioritize the, the very important tasks, um, that compass that I talked about. And at the end, I will help you apply the framework. All right. So um, you can spend a minute now reflect on, reflecting on how are you currently prioritizing your tasks. So is it by urgency? Is it by importance? Is it a mix of both? How do you make, you know, you, you, you have these 500 tasks on your list. How do you decide what to work on? So you can re reflect on that for yourself. And meanwhile, <laughs> I'll also um, give you this little challenge, right? Um, so if you look at this jar, let's assume, um, so if you look at this jar and these rocks, pebbles, sand, and water, how would you fit everything in? Um, okay, so where would you start? How can you make sure that everything fits in? I'll let you reflect on that for a second. So what happens when you start with the sand is that your jar is going to look like this. So things don't fit in. However, when you start with the rocks, your jar will look like the one on the right side, right? So the way it works, right? You put in the, the big rocks first, then you add the pebbles. So the pebbles will find their way into the cracks between the big rocks. Then you add the sand, the sand is smaller, right? So then again, it will find its way into in between the little cracks of the pebbles and the rocks. And at the very end, you pour in the water and you can try this at, at home, it works, right? If you start with the sand, this is what happens. The jar will overflow and the big rocks are not gonna fit in. And this is exactly the analogy that um, we can use to understand, okay, if you wanna become good at prioritizing, you need to start with the rocks. You need to start with the important tasks, right? Because otherwise, you know, if you start with fixing the printer, which I think we can all agree is not a high leverage task, then this is what, what's going to happen. So you spend an hour fixing the printer. Printers always break, right? Very frustrating. And then you don't get to that data analysis or that big grant you wanted to write because you were busy fixing the printer or helping someone else who had some urgency or who came to your desk to stay with the, um, with the example that someone gave in the chat earlier today. So we need to start with the rocks. If we want to fit every, you know, think of the jar as the time that you have available in your day. If we want to fit all the tasks in, we need to start with the big rocks. So now the question is obviously, what are the big rocks? That's, that's what we are here for today. On the one hand, we want to know how to prioritize. Okay, so now we know the big rocks need to go first. 
And then we want to understand, so what, what are the big rocks? Um, okay, now the framework, right? So now the big answer. So this is the framework. Think of the water, sand, pebbles, and rocks as four different categories of tasks. And um, I'll give you examples for each of these tasks, and we'll run through them um, step by step, right? But there are the the categories where we all get stuck in, and and this is just a fact of life, right? Is usually the routine tasks, and um, you know, and these should not actually be ideally not be on your schedule. So as much as you can, delete them, don't do them, delegate them, or automate them. Same for support tasks. So they might be, you know, they they are they support you in your role, whichever your role is, right? So usually I talk from the perspective of an executive director who also has to fundraise, but you can apply this framework to whichever level you're at, right? So you anyone has big rocks in their, you know, in their within the scope of their role. Um, and everyone also has this water, which is just not as important. Right? And then executive tasks. So I call them executive tasks because these are the things that you're paid to do. These are the things that are in your um, in your job description, right? So if you're a grant writer, write the grant, <laughs> do grant research, and we'll get to more examples later or in a minute actually. And then there are the high leverage tasks. And these are the ones, right? As we said, these are the rocks that you need to really prioritize. And these rocks, so if executive tasks, right? So if you're, if you're a grant writer and you're thinking now, okay, if grant writing is my job, then what are the rocks? And we'll get to that, we'll get to more examples, but basically the way you think about them is what are tasks that make, or activities that might make the rocks, your executive tasks easier? Okay, so, that is the fundraising compass. And now we will dive into more deeply to understand um, what are examples of these tasks, right? And feel free to, to ask uh, if something is not clear. Again, find me on LinkedIn. If you have any follow-up questions, I'm happy to help. I think this is just an extremely important framework, which I personally use in my entire life, right? Um, so this is for everything. You can use this chart for everything in your life, right? Even if it's spending time with family, there are things that are just like routine tasks. Think of that unloading the dishwasher. Is it moving the needle on having quality time with your family or with the folks that you care about? No. Um, how about the things that actually matter? Let's say executive task, I would say, is playing with your kids or calling up your friends to go out for coffee, right? That's, you know, that is actually moving the needle if you're thinking, the box you're thinking in or the jar is um, spending quality time with friends and family. Okay, so let's run through this. Routine tasks in terms of fundraising. And again, usually my perspective is um, executive directors um, who don't have fundraising stuff. So um, let's start here. So these are tasks that are time consuming, but don't have any impact on your bottom line. So what could that be? This is, for example, note taking. Somehow needs to be done because you need to remember what, what people said. And actually, you know, here I want to tell you, why, this is why I mentioned AI earlier, because AI can take over these things for you, right? Tools like Fireflies or, you know, all these apps that you have integrated into Zoom right now, that is gonna, you know, that is gonna enable you to delete and delegate or automate, automate these tasks database updates same thing so of course someone needs to update the database does it have to be you if it's not your job well maybe you can find someone whose job this could be and even if that's a volunteer right don't forget volunteers volunteers are amazing volunteers can a lot of do a lot of things um so think about things that you know who you can outsource to even if you maybe are in a more junior position and there are no people reporting to you so who can take that on or can you delete it or automate it? Um, anything that has to do with printing, again, this can be 
um, sped up a lot if you figure out how to do this faster, right? So how can you automate that? Um, printing is a pain in the uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that, but um, okay. So these are the the routine tasks. You know, they don't have any impact on your bottom line. So what about support tasks, right? So they are different in the sense, or let's say cleaning up your storage. So the storage, I mean, if it's cleaned up, um, that's good. But does it move the needle? No, it does not move the needle at all. So support tasks. These are tasks that aren't directly tied to revenue generation, but which need to get done. Ideally, you would delete or delegate them or automate them. So. Um, grants research so can you have someone do the grants research again think of volunteers volunteers can be an amazing resource if you train them and um, social media posts uh, you need to do it um but they are not like if you have to choose between let's say a social media post and asking a major donor for a donation what do you do, right? So you realize, okay, social media posts is kind of necessary because you need to keep your donors in the loop and all that. But if you had to choose between the two, would you post on social media or would you go with a donor on a coffee date? Well, you would go out with the major donor, obviously, because this is more directly revenue, revenue generating. This is indirect. Volunteer management, right? So volunteers have a supporting function you know, they don't drive, like managing volunteers does not directly drive revenue unless they might, you know, depending on what sort of organization you are and what you exactly do, unless they actually take on specific um, fundraising tasks, direct fundraising tasks. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are support tasks. Then, and I'm checking the time, executive tasks. So the ex 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 execution of this task will directly lead to more revenue. So if you're not an executive director or in a higher level position within your organization or a development director, think of that what's in your job description. So this is the core of the things that you are paid to do. This is what you're paid to do. This is your job as I wrote there, right? So what is that? let's say from the perspective of an executive director or let's say writing, you know, grant writer, let's say is writing a grant. The executive director, if they don't have fundraising staff, they need to write the grant. If you're a grant writer, you need to write the grant. So that is just what you're paid to do, oh, which is directly related to um, revenue. Drafting an annual appeal. So this, you know, a good annual appeal is gonna directly impact your bottom line. As I mentioned earlier, meeting with a major donor. These are the things that move the needle. So these are the things that are your job, right? Whichever role you have in an organization. Okay, so these are the executive tasks. Now the big question is, so if the executive tasks are the pebbles, and you know that's usually where people think, okay, so this is the thing that I need to focus on, but wait, there is actually something else that is even more important and i mentioned that earlier right what are the activities that make the executive tasks the stuff that you're paid to do easier so let me give you a um, few examples so high leverage tasks right I, ca I call my business actually fundraising levers because that's what i want people to focus on and understand that this is the most important thing that you need to do as a um, as a fundraiser, you need to think in terms of high leverage tasks. You know, a lever is something you apply a little bit of pressure and you have a huge impact, right? That's what a lever does. So these are tasks that lay the foundation for your strategy and that ensure the sustainability of your funding. Examples. This could be data analysis. And here we are getting into the, the idea of how to fundraise smarter, not harder. One, you know, just one afternoon diving into last year's fundraising revenue. Let's say um, just analyzing, or over the last three years, how many new donors have you found? What's your retention rate, right? Retention rate. 
many, many people don't understand retention rate and the importance of ret retention rate. If you're not, it's like a leaky bucket, right? Um, if you're not focusing on keeping the donors that you have or keeping the, the funders, grant makers that you currently have, then you will always hustle to bring in new members, uh, or, sorry, new funders, new donors. It is much cheaper and much more efficient to keep those that are already engaged. So do a deep dive into your do donor database into, or whatever you're, you're using, your CRM, to see um, what can you learn from the data? Where is your bucket leaky? Um, are you co continuously increasing the number of new donors? Are you increasing the gift size of your donors? What does data tell you? So that will make it easier for you to then do the right things. Because again, productivity is about doing the right things. In order to know what the right things are, you need to look into your data. Second example, training on Friday. So I, I, I gave an example on board training, right? So that's when you're an executive director and you don't have development staff, just as an example. And I know there are lots out there. That's why I always like this example. If you train others to support you in your role, then you make your life easier, right? If you train volunteers to help you with uh, grants research, that's easy. That makes your life easier. That builds capacity for you, no matter where you are and whether you have a budget or not. Same for boards. So if a board member or developing you know, materials for the board, they can use to reach out to their networks, right? That makes your life easier. Now you have folks who can go out and checking the time, oops, almost done, um, who can bring in more donors. Um, all right, so, um, or impl implementing a planned giving program. Once you set that up, that brings in revenue year over year, right? So um, you plant the seeds now. Think of it in terms of planting a seed. Where can you plant seeds um, to make your life easier? And then, yeah, fundraising strategy, right? What is our strategy? Are we just doing the things that we did last year or can we be more strategic coming back to data analysis? These are the high leverage tasks. All right, so that's the most important thing. Okay, so now apply the framework. Um, so what do you do now? This is how you ideally allot or manage your time. You will ideally, and I know we all wear a hundred different hats and I'm sure he is, there is someone in here who does it all on their own, routine tasks. So how can you use AI, back to the AI example, right? How can you use AI to do the note taking for you? And then, or how can you use ChatGPT, Claude, whichever tool you're using to do some data analysis, like qualitative data. So you met with five donors, you took notes from five donor meetings. What What is a common thread in there? Put it into, of course, you don't put um, private data in, in, in any of the tools, right? Um, but how can you leverage AI tools to do some of the routine tasks for you? Same for the support tasks. So support tasks, ideally 0%, that's not going to happen. We all do support tasks to some extent, but that's your rough guideline, right? Um, can you delete, automate, um, or outsource them? Executive tasks should take about 60% of your time. And then the high leverage tasks, and this is the challenge, right? Should take about 20% of your time or just think about, okay, every day, even if you spend one hour just on making your life easier, every day, just one hour or even just 30 minutes, just spend 30 minutes going through your donor database or any data that you have or thinking about how can I train or outsource? How can I make my life easier? How can I plant seeds so that tomorrow my life will be easier? Which tools can I establish? What can I learn to make my job easier? So that should be 20% of your time. And the most important thing is really to schedule that time um, on your calendar and block that because otherwise the printer breaks, people come up to your desks and, and, and talk to you and you will again be out of the loop. All right, so this is the framework 
Um, and if you would like some more resources, uh, use this uh, QR code to get the, the task prior cheat sheet where, again, I have lots of examples on that. I walk you through the entire system and how to do it all. And I'll also send along the webinar recording of how to use AI tools to do many of the tasks with the exact scripts um, and also how to opt out of ChatGPT using your, um, your data. Okay, so uh, that's all I have from my end. And I wanna leave, oops, um, yeah. If, if you have questions, please shoot ahead. I'm sure we have questions. Monica, if you, um, yeah, if you can share any questions that we have, again, if you don't have, if, if you can't stay on or if you have questions that can't be answered, feel free to reach out to me um, or register for this uh, toolkit, then you'll have my contact details. All right, Monica. Um, yep, hi, Anne, thank you. It looks like we are, running out of time. And so I will say, if you do have any questions for Anne, I think it's best to reach out to her directly, or you can reach out to us at program at nonprofitlearninglab.org. Thank you, Anne. This is the official end to today's workshop. If you all are interested in receiving the recording and materials from today's free webinar, you can visit our free webinars page on the Nonprofit Learning Lab website. Um, you can also shoot us an email at program at nonprofitlearninglab.org. Thank you all so much for participating. And again, thank you so much, Anne, for educating our community. Thank you. <laughs>